last time we talked about it, it was like, okay, this is going to be maybe five to ten years down the road. Now, as we're talking about it, we're starting to lay the pieces down for a move. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. morning friends it is the day after Christmas and I just finished making bagels so I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out of the oven and I wanted to show you guys pack our bags and get in that car leave a little note and we'll drive real far let's get out so these bagels are sourdough bagels and I use them with my sourdough starter, which I have just started going about a week and a half ago, maybe a little bit more. I'm actually going to feed it this morning, so I wanted to talk about sourdough with you guys. So we're just gonna add the flour, just add a little bit of water, and you just go ahead and stir. You want it to be like a thick pancake batter, kind of. You need to be able to stir it. So if it's too thick, add a little bit more water just so you can stir it. Historically, I've been really afraid of making bread at all because the idea of having the rise and the initial rise and then all of those technical processes stressed me out. And so I just avoided it altogether. And what I'm finding is after doing it a couple times, it feels so much less intimidating. So if you want to try sourdough or you just want to try bread in general, try an easy recipe first. The first recipe I tried was like world's easiest artisan bread and I'll post the link for that recipe in the description below. All you did was like hand mix some dough the night before, you didn't even knead it and then the next morning it rose and you baked it in a Dutch oven and it was super, super simple. Now that I've done that bread and then I've made bagels twice and I made cinnamon rolls the other day using sourdough, I feel a lot more comfortable with the process of kneading dough with my stand mixer, which is right next to me. And I feel more comfortable with rising dough. I feel more comfortable with shaping dough and I feel a lot more comfortable with baking it. So overall, I just feel like a lot more confident and that makes it so much more fun. And those bagels look so delicious. So I'm really looking forward to having one of them this morning. So I wanted to make bread for a while. Um, and I kind of just didn't because I was intimidated by it and I was just like, I don't need extra work in my life. But as we got closer and closer to 2022, in Christmas time, I was thinking, okay, I just wanna do it. Why not try it? Um, my friend Ashley over at Uncommon Roots Homestead, she's been making bread for a while. My friend Natalie over at Hayes Good Life, she's also been making bread for a while. There's so many people that I watch make bread and I'm so inspired by and so I wanted to try it out, try it out and see if I could do it and turns out it's really fun, it's really rewarding and it's one of the most like empowering things I've done this year. If you're looking for a good source of sourdough starter, I got mine from Wild Oaks Farm. She's on Instagram and she has an Etsy shop where she sells dehydrated sourdough starter. And for me, that was a great option because I needed something that I didn't have to use right away. I think the intimidation of the process made me just like, I needed like a beat, you know, a minute to just feel like, to just feel like I had some time before rushing into it. And with the dehydrated starter, you don't have to do it the second that it arrives. So to make these bagels, oh my gosh, they look so good. So good. Um, to make these basils, I made the dough last night in the mixer and kneaded it um, in the mixer and then let it rise overnight. And then this morning, I just had to shape it, boil it for a few minutes on both sides, and then top it with, I did a sesame everything. So instead of just doing just everything or just sesame, I like a lot of sesame seeds and I like everything seasoning. So I did like a half and half. And what's fun about making them yourself is you can flavor them however you'd like. If you Maybe you like cinnamon raisin, but you also wanna add something else to them. But 
The bagels have been so delicious. The cinnamon rolls were amazing. Everyone kept commenting on the cinnamon rolls. And if you're kind of like, well, I don't even like the sour taste of sourdough. Honestly, it doesn't really taste that strong. Like I don't notice a difference in the flavor of these bagels from the sourdough than I would from like a typical yeasted bagel. I don't notice a difference in the cinnamon rolls from the sourdough other than a typical cinnamon roll. The only thing is it gives it just like a little zing to it that's really, like, it just adds like a nice flavor, but it's not, it doesn't change it that much altogether. So just try it. If, you, if you're curious, it's delicious. So yesterday we celebrated Christmas with family. For Christmas I asked for sourdough related bread making supplies and I just said Chris you do the research figure out what I need because he's just really good at that kind of thing and that's what I want for Christmas but unfortunately all of the items were super delayed so I don't actually have anything for bread making quite yet but I've been making do with just my standard kitchen tools um, I did get some flour some better flour at the store I like the King Arthur flour but um, I'm going to be switching to the Azure standard flour just because I can get it in bulk. I just ordered some online. Our second Azure standard order, lots of stuff this time. I think we got like 80 pounds worth of food this time, whereas last time we got like 20 pounds. So I spent like over $200 and have got like tons of bulk goods. Um, and if you guys wanna see what the Azure standard process looks like, I can show you, I can bring you with me to the drop and show you our order and all the things that we got and go over like the total price price with you if that would be interesting to you. Um, just let me know in the comments below if you like to see that and I will do my best to record it. Malachi got a little play kitchen for Christmas which is so cute and actually really surprised that he is already playing with it because he's so little still but he comes over here and he opens all the doors and he grabs the pots and pans and there's a little cell phone thing over here which he loves to grab. Hi puppies. Hi puppies. With Aunt Brittany. Can you yes. judge? Can you judge our gingerbread contest? Do you want to grab him? Yes. <laughs> so cute. Putting his lid back on and off. Come here, you. You got. Keep your lid down. Boy, Artie. All right. Ah! Whoa! Come here, Chef. Look at that, Chef Kai. Okay. Ready for this? Come and judge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which one are you gonna touch? Just like let him. You see the houses? Yeah. Oh, which one do you want? He's gonna go for the middle one, probably. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh! Yeah! He grabbed the middle one. <laughs> <laughs> we won! Good job. Who's second place? He got that from his grandma and grandpa in Rochester. And he got this cool learning tower from his gran, gran and kahuna out in California. They sent us this. And this is awesome for bringing into the kitchen because he can stand in here and he can help me, help me in the kitchen. So I'll pop in a little clip of him helping me with the cinnamon rolls yesterday. Can you say hi? Hi. Oh, kitty. Hi, Junior. Malka, are we baking cinnamon rolls? Yeah? yeah. There's some cinnamon rolls. Is that so much fun? Yeah. You got your puffies? We're making the frosting. Whoa, yummy. Ooh. You want me to have one? Okay. Thank you. There's one other thing I got for Christmas from my mom um, that was super exciting. I'm going to show you guys. And I had been looking forward to for a really long time. So I don't know what you think this is. It looks just like kind of like a coffee container, like some kind of canister you'd put like a hot liquid in. But if you see the little logo up there, that's a cow, right? And it's a cow with a head made out of almonds. It's called the almond cow. And it's a plant milk maker. So it's super, super cool. I used it yesterday for the first time. And after making plant milk from scratch over the past few weeks, this was such a nice change. But I love this. I think it fits about six or seven cups, maybe eight cups. Might be just like a half gallon size, but 
I had this basically full yesterday and then I used um, some of the walnut cashew milk last night to make hot cocoa for Chris and I for like a little Christmas treat. So I am loving the almond cow. I am just loving making our own plant milk in general. I started doing it maybe a week and a half ago and we have just completely stopped buying plant milk from the store. I've done oat milk, almond milk, cashew milk, um, soy milk, which I shared a video of. If you haven't seen that yet, you can look at our recent videos. It's like the most recent one. And it's just really fun, really delicious. And you can get so many like amazing flavors and creaminess and richness, so much healthier for you, much less waste. Really loving that the same way I have loved learning to garden and grow our own food and do all the other things we do on the farm. So I'm gonna hop out for a little bit. I'll catch up with you guys later and we'll just like have a conversation about what's going on right now on the farm and in our lives. Malachi, what's your name? <laughs> do, you want, do you want your baby? 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 What does a rooster say? Should we sing wheels in the bus? <laughs> the wheels on the bus go. <laughs> Do you want it to be on TV? You want Coco wheels in the bus? Coco? Coco. Coco. <laughs> you want to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you want to say, hi? Ba, ba, ba. You, baby. Baby? Baby. Baby? Can you say, hi? We just wanted to fill you guys in on some of our plans in the next, between a year and two years, like kind of things. Things are a little bit up in the air, but we wanted to kind of like fill you guys in. So last time I talked to you guys, I was talking by myself, Chris wasn't here, and it was like the first time we had even started talking about it. We maybe had brought it up like a couple days before. Yeah. It was like the first time we had even like talk about, talked about the subject, and it was like as soon as we started talking about it, we both realized that it kind of is what we both want. Mm -hmm. I think we were like, oh, that makes so much sense. Why haven't we thought about that sooner? About moving in general? I think we both realized like we're more free than we think. Why are we like limiting ourselves to staying here longer than we want to? Yeah, I think well, with any of these transitions, they always seem pretty impossible to figure out the like the minute details of and so it's easier to just put them off into this like arbitrary timeline or deadline and to not deal with them as trying to make them realistic or as realistic as quickly as possible. Do you see camera? Can you not say that, hi? I was trying to talk here, mister. Can you say hi to yourself? No. Do you want to move? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to get passy? Yeah, so I think what, what Chris is saying is when you think about moving, it seems so overwhelming that it's like, oh, well, let's not even talk about that. It's too much. Like, just, let's just stay. Just put an arbitrary timeline on it. Yeah, like 10 years down the road, we'll move. In 10 years, it's not going to be any easier necessarily oh, to move because we could still have chickens. We could still have farm animals, still have horses. Like, yeah. it might even be harder. Like, who knows? Yeah. Um, and I think we realized, okay, like, we were talking about moving to the Pacific Northwest, to so like Washington and Oregon area, because I've just always loved that climate, loved that area. But then we're both realizing, well, my family's in California, his family's out here. We don't want to be in a state where we're not within a driving distance of either one of our families. Yes. Um, and I think the biggest trigger for us was every time I, particularly for me, every time we left California, I would feel this like heavy weight of I don't want to leave, I don't want to go home. And then we'd get home and I'd be really depressed for a few days and then it's not like I would just like bounce back and be like, okay, I'm happy here. And it's like every single time we went to California, I would have the same experience. And it kind of just hit me like, why are we living in a place that we don't necessarily want to come home to? Um, like I want to live in a place where we're excited to come home from vacation because we miss, you know, we miss our home. and. Not that I don't feel home here. I love it here, but there's a certain element of like the winter, the wet winter specifically. Like yeah. I think in November when we go to California. Well, we spend when we're in California, we spend so much time outside or living like cohesive like days, like inside and outside, just kind of without moving back and forth without any issue or any 
any uncomfortability and so coming back where you're just confined to the indoors and you don't want to be outside by any means possible it, it's a big stark change and the light like the day daylight here is so um, the sunshine for the biggest yeah, yeah really we're lacking in sunshine for yeah. like six months out of the year 50 like percent days that are sunny here so i think we also realize that the cons here they're not resolvable. Like the weather is not going to change. I mean, it may change a little bit with global warming, but it's not going to like, we're not going to suddenly get tons of sunshine in the winter. We're not going to suddenly get like warmer weather. We're not going to suddenly get like more rational weather in the summers. It's still going to be like erratic the way it is. And I think that's a lot to manage emotionally when you're somebody who wants to be outside a lot, when you're in the garden a lot, like navigating like windstorms, snowstorms, rainstorms, thunderstorms, like all of those things so frequently it gets to be a lot hey. so all of those things we've been dealing with for years like every time we leave california it's like the same conversation of oh like we don't want to go back and it's not an easy decision either it would be difficult to leave my family and that's like that's just the what we've signed up for in terms of us being from different sides of the country is that we always have one of us is gonna be choosing one family over the other but the reality is that it's more likely that my family will be able to move or travel more often as they get into their retirement years than jen's family will jen's family is pretty set on staying in california so that plays a part in it as well yeah there's like so many factors and if my family lived in like the Carolinas or they if they live somewhere like in some other warmer state south of us we would probably be considering to moving that state it's not like we're specifically like we want to live in California but I think we want to live in a sunnier warmer climate and also be near family and the only option for us is either like California or like Arizona and I'm just not a huge fan of the areas of Arizona that are close to California they're just I mean they're beautiful but <coughs> to me there's something about those those mountains, those like... <laughs> <laughs> he wants so much attention right now. <laughs> Last time we talked about it, it was like, okay, this is going to be maybe five to ten years down the road. Now, as we're talking about it, we're starting to lay the pieces down for a move. Not tomorrow, but we're, you know, looking for job opportunities um, or seeing if current opportunities would work across the country. Um, we're looking for, I, we're doing a trip in March. We're, do, we're doing a trip in the spring. We're going to be visiting a number of areas in California, um, looking at potential places to move in the next whatever years. Um, and some of those areas are like the, uh, foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. So, you know, the area outside of Yosemite, the area outside of Lake Tahoe, really beautiful. It's very different than what you might think of like as typical California climate, typical California areas. We're looking at rural countryside type parts of the state. We're not looking um, in any of the major suburban or urban environments. We're also thinking about how we would find new homes for the animals in the case where we would move, find good permanent homes for them because trying to move across the country and trying to have a farm situated where all the animals would be just able to move right into is just not feasible for us at this point in our lives especially since we're thinking of buying land and building uh we would it would there'd just be so many hurdles we'd have to face with moving the animals and it'd be very stressful for them very stressful for, stressful for us us and pretty cost prohibitive and starting yeah. over I don't think it would be the greatest to the animals either having no. to move to the such stress a, a, a cross first, country yeah, first trip. First a cross country trip, but then they'd be settling into an entirely different climate than they're used yeah, to. Yeah, different parasites, different weather, different like bacteria in the soils and all kinds of things. It can be a lot on their immune systems. We do have a really good potential home lined up for like all the farm animals, so that makes us feel a lot better. So there's a lot of factors to think about when we talk about this move, but I think the biggest thing for us is we still want to have the lifestyle that we have. So we're, we're not talking about moving and going and living, living in the suburbs or go, going and living in like an apartment. I think for us, like we do know we still want to live the homesteading life. We both want, I love gardening. We both want to still be able to grow our own food. We still want to have space for Malachi and our future kids to be able to kind of be outside. I think we want to live in an area where there's a lot of other people doing that and a lot of other people having, you know, horses and gardens. And I, one thing that's really exciting for me is having like 
a food forest in California with the climate being so mild. Yeah. We could grow so many things there and that like really excites me. Um, you know, depending on parts of the state that we move, we could grow citrus or we could grow avocados. We could have more nut trees. I think there's a lot of people that would be like, oh, why would you want to move to California? There's wildfires, there's drought, there's a political climate that some people might not be a fan of. And I think like for us, you make a pros and cons list and each person's going to weigh the pros and the cons differently. And I think for us, like the pros of living there just outweigh the cons and the pros of living there can never be met here. So like, there's certain factors that we can't meet here in Rochester area, New York, um, that we would be able to meet in California. And like the biggest one I think for us is just the climate and the sunshine. And I think we know we want to live in, I specifically want to live in a place with a lot of sun. You've always I've wanted always to, wanted live. to live with somewhere where there's more sun. Yeah. And I really struggle with seasonal depression. I struggle with like wanting to like get out of bed and doing anything during the day when the weather's really crummy. And I think day after day that gets like really exhausting. And then it just gets me in a mood where I just don't want to go outside at all, like ever, because I'm just like in that state. And so I would love to be in a place where we can like have the door, the doors open and like have the, you know, like the breeze coming through the house, like almost all year long. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see where we end up. Um, we'll kind of take you guys on that journey with us. Um, I'll definitely, we'll definitely take you in March when we road trip around California and show you the different places we're considering. Yeah, I would just love if you guys could be supportive and, you know, happy to answer questions in the comments and answer questions in future videos. But, um, yeah, we, we know the cons. I, I grew up there. I've lived there, lived there for 20 years. So I know like the cons of living in California. I know the high cost of living. I know, I know what the political climate is like. We're both comfortable with the way things are there. Um, we know, I know what it's like to have fire risk. That would be new to Chris, but that's something that we would really consider with where we move. And you know, having a drought is another factor to consider, but really that's going to be a con any place we decide to move because we want to live in a place that's sunny so often and where there's a lot of sun, there's not a lot of rain. Uh, so the pretty much the sunniest places in the nation are going to be the areas most prone to drought. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of like you choose one, you, you get, you get the baggage that comes with it. So here we have such an abundance of water that it creates like a constant problem with our garden with like, um, we have so many diseases. We, the, the plants get totally waterlogged. We have oxygenation issues just because there's just such an overabundance of water, snow melt, just constant. Everything's constantly wet. Yeah. So we want to live in a place where it's opposite. <laughs> and I think we're going to get the cons that go with the opposite. That being said, if we had lived in California for five years, I'm sure we'd come out to Rochester and be like, Oh, there's so many nice things about, Rochester. I think wherever you live, you're going to live and you're going to notice the cons more and you're going to see other places and you're going to notice their pros and not their cons. So For sure. it's just life. But at the end of the day, you just have to go off of where you feel like God is leading you and you're not going to go wrong. So I think that's like, I think we both feel like that's what's next for us and that's where we're going to go. And you know, if we don't absolutely love it, we're, you're never stuck in a situation like there's so many opportunities where you can reconsider where you're at and see if it's the best thing for you. Um, so the best thing for us right now, I would say, is to, to, to plan and to look at moving. And so we're going to continue in that direction unless, unless life quickly sh throws us curveballs and we decide that maybe that's not the best direction. So yeah, we'll see. We'll take you guys along with us and can you say hi? Hi. Hi, Kai. Hi. Hmm. Anyways, we love you guys. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Um, I hope you have a wonderful new year and we'll be 2022 could have a lot of adventure for us. So we're excited to just share what's next and bring you guys along the ride. Talk to you guys soon. Bye friends. Bye. Bye. Bye.